Hey guys. Wow, that was all of a sudden. <laughs> How are you guys doing? I am Nabi about you here to always bring you intimate truth. It's the truth that you embrace that makes you free. So listen, guys, um, I want to pop in here really quickly. Um, thank you so much for sharing, 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 sharing. If you're on Facebook, start a watch party. Start a watch party. What? Come on in the room. Let's do this. All right. And so for those of you that are watching on YouTube, you already know what to do. Comment, comment, like, and subscribe. So, and for Periscope, I know you guys are leaving in, what, March? But you can still share with your followers. And so, um, again, like I said, I wanted to pop on here really quickly and just talk about um, navigating in the prophetic. And so, as most of you already know, there is so much um, going on as far as conversationally about what's prophetic, what's not prophetic, who's prophetic, and how can I become more more prophetic. Um, I want to talk about, I talk about these things. Also, I do want to open up for Q&A if you have any questions, because this topic has been so, so mishandled, so misdiagnosed. People have been misdiagnosed, unfortunately. It's a true story. Ask me how I know. Just just ask me. All right, so let me know if my sound is good. I'm not using my mic today, so I'm just coming through my um, my computer. So if, the, if there is any, if it's not loud enough or whatever, just let me know in the comments. I would be so grateful. All right, so um, my background, my background. So the first church that I ever went to was known as a fivefold ministry. That's actually where I gave my life to the Lord. And, and so we have had bishops in there. We had apostles. We had prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. We had all of, basically all of the ascension gifts um, in that place. And so I, I, I actually call it the school of hard knocks because I had to learn I, although I was not that happy there over time, I did learn a lot. And so what I learned a lot about was what not to do. And so when you come to a ministry, especially when you've never been in church your entire life, um, like myself, you think that because it's happening in church, it, well, it must be good. It must be uh, credible. And it's actually incredible. It's like unbelievable the things that you will see. And aside from church hurt, aside from being gossiped about and all of this, we'll we'll just slide, let that run through the filter and really stay on task as far as this topic is concerned, navigating in the prophetic. And so I want to, let me see if I can pull that up. Uh, Is that the right one? Well, that's not the right one. But we're going to talk about the world. <laughs> where is she? There it is. I'm sorry, y'all. I just didn't know where I put that. So navigating in the prophetic. Navigating in the prophetic. And so why is this important? It's important because there are things that you're just going to have to learn. There are things that you're going to have to bump your head and find out, unfortunately, um, that's just the way that goes. And so when you are looking at how things are, are moving in the prophetic, and this is a part of my class, there are some terms that we all need to know. And, um, and this one is actually taken from one of my classes that's coming up February 6th. And so I just want to give you some terms. Just, these, are, these are just basic basic things that you should know. All right. So navigate. What does that mean? It means to move on over or through to direct or manage plot the control of a ship. And then there's the word regiment. This is all going to help you guys because this is my book. This is from my boot camp class. Ground forces consisting of two or more battalions or battle groups. Um, You got a headquarters unit. And so then we slip into, and I'm probably going to separate this Now, what does seduce mean? Because when it comes to the prophetic, there's things that you're going to learn about seductions, enticements, fascinations, allurements, temptation, interests, 
This is how you get hooked, things that you are interested in. And deceit. Now, deceit is different than lying. Deceit means, well, there's a part of the truth in it, just enough to make it believable. And so what the enemy wants to do is sear your conscience. And that's going to basically turn the heart um, or your soul dry, make you indifferent, um, to mark. It's, this is what seared means. There's a scripture that talks about um, having your conscience seared, like with a hot iron. And it happens very, very quickly. And so it means to mark or injure with or as with a sudden application of heat. We see this happening all over ministries. This is when people step into what we call that, um, what we call when people just, they just do whatever they want. And no matter what you tell them, this is what they're going to do. They, they're like, they're right. You can't tell them nothing because their consciousness has been seared. And so they no longer know how to navigate in the realm of the spirit because of what? Because of seducting spirits, seducing spirits. They've been enticed. Why? They've been tempted because of something that they were interested in. And so then they are therefore deceived. Let me know if this is helping you, please. All right. Let me know. All right. So, um, and I want to talk to you guys about forerunner spirits because last week we were talking about demons, dungeons, and dragons, right? Dungeons, demons, and dragons. And so there is always going to be a forerunner spirit. How, and this is, if you don't know this, you're not going to be able to successfully navigate through the prophetic realm. You're not because you will get caught out there as we all have, right? So a forerunner, that's a spirit that's going to go ahead. He's on the spot. That's the first one in. That is what you call the strong man. So a forerunner means to go before. It is a precursor, one sin in advance, a herald or even a harbinger. And so this is why you have to spot check yourself in the realm of the spirit. That just simply means to examine yourself, beloved. And so forerunner spirits are ones that show up first as a strong man and gatekeeper to allow the others to come and to take up where the other ones left off. All right, so let me just pull that out. And so what I try to explain to people, especially as it pertains to spiritual warfare, is that the enemy comes in, spirits come in like gangs. They, they just kind of link arms. And so you have that forerunner, that's the one that shows up first. Shows up first. Now, here's your example. I'm going to give you two examples, right? I'm going to give you two examples. Genesis 4, with Cain and his brother Havel. You know them as Cain and Abel. And another example is when uh, Judas sat next, next to Yeshua. And the Bible says, it says it, it's right there, that Hasatan the adversary, went right into him. And Yeshua turned and looked at him and said, go do whatever you got to do. But the rest of the disciples sitting around the table were not discerning. They thought that because Judas was the treasurer, that Yeshua was sending him to go do something, something, something to do with some money, some treasure or whatever. They're sitting right there with Yeshua, right there. And that's how we are. We walk in with the Lord and stuff still happens. So when people say, oh, well, this can't happen to Christians and this can't happen, I beg to differ. And the only thing I got to back me up is the word of God. Amen. So we have to learn to discern. There's two kinds of discernments. Now, let me, before I get into that, let me, let me just go hyperlink this with Judas and Yeshua all the way back to Genesis 4, where Cain uh, was in and had an encounter with the Lord and the Lord ministered to him and was just like, what's the matter with you? Why is your face falling? What's, 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 what's really good? What's going on? He said, if you look, if you do good, will it not be accepted? So Cain was upset because his offering 
his praise, his worship, what he wanted to do was unacceptable. We have to learn how to give God what he wants. Because what happens is, if we don't like the fact that God is not happy with whatever we're trying to present to him, then we, do, then we got the nerve to get an attitude. But that's when the adversary comes in. That's what the forerunner spirit is looking for. And I mean on the demonic side. This is what he's looking for. He is looking for a way in. And when we behave that way, we just gave him invitation to come on in and to do whatever he wants. And that's what happened. So he got mad. He got jealous. He got mad. He got jealous. He probably got depressed. Right? I'm, I'm saying probably. Because there's a thing that happens in the mind when depression comes. There's a darkness that comes. And then God said to him, this is how God ministered to him. If you do well, shall it not be accepted? So that's telling him, bruh, you kind of messed up on that, but you still have an opportunity. And he says, sin is crouching at the door and this desire is to have you, right? But, here's the prophetic word, but you can do what? You can master it. So God is telling him point blank period. And this is with no Holy Ghost. There's no Holy Spirit. I need to sit back. No Holy Spirit. And God is telling him. You can master this thing. Because remember, God gave us all things pertaining to life and godliness. Life and godliness. It wasn't just in the New Testament. This is why we have to read our Bibles. Am I helping anybody here this evening? Right? No Holy Spirit. No indwelling. And God is telling him. But watch what happened. He decided to take his soul and turn it over to the adversary. And then the spirit of murder came in, right? And he slew his brother. And then the lying spirit came because when God said, where's your brother? I don't know where you at. What you asking me for? Am I my brother's keeper? So they come in like gangs. And so how do you navigate? You stay honest, you stay pure, you stay, you stay truthful before God. That's how, you, that's how you're able to navigate in the realm of the spirit. You stay humble, you stay sincere, you stay honest, you stay true. You're in your word. You're not moved by your feelings. Feelings are there for a reason. God gave them to you, but they are indicators to show you what's happening right now. Where are you? Same conversation he had with Adam. Where are you now that you done decided to do this? Where are you at now? The first feeling he had was fear. Why? The Bible said they ran and they hid themselves. And so we thank God for Yeshua. We thank God for Rokodesh. Holy Spirit, who leads and guides us into all truth. We thank God. We thank you, Father. We thank you. But Holy Spirit has come as a guide and a tool to use to be able to navigate in places that we cannot see. Guess what we can't see? Ourselves. We cannot see ourselves. We think we know ourselves. Again, let me give you a scripture. Shimon or Simon. Shimon, he thought he knew himself. Lord, I'm ready to die. I'm about about it. Yeah, we can get, yo, we can get out here. We can get this. Really? Scene two. I don't know him. What? Get away from me. No, I don't know him. No, your speech betrays you because you sound like you've been with the Lord. No, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. So he didn't know himself. He did not know. And the funny thing is Yeshua told him right before that happened, he told him. That Satan, Hasatan, has 
basically come to me concerning you. And he wants to sift you as wheat, bruh. He wants to sift you as wheat. But I pray for you. I pray that your faith don't fail. Now watch this. Yeshua is the intercessor. If he can't get a prayer through, I, I just, I don't know. But in steps in. Here walks in free will. So even though the Lord loves you, adores you, died for you. He did all of that. Prayed for you. Interceded. Cried out between the porch and the altar. But your own will took you down another path. That's how that's that's how that happens. Because you're like, well, yeah, but I was praying. I don't understand. But how, well, because free will has a voice. And free will has a voice that is loud. Loud and raging. And so with, with Shimon, there was fear. There was intimidation. He didn't know what was going to happen. And, and, and so he's stuck in a position where there, they, he already knows that they, they took Yeshua away. And what happened? He didn't want to get killed. He didn't want to get arrested. He didn't want to be beheaded. He didn't want no, no parts of that. So he was afraid. But you know what? The Lord later redeemed him. And so when he says, you know, um, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I, I love you. Feed my lambs. Do you love me? And so when he asked them about, he asked them different types of love. It wasn't the same, it wasn't the same word. But I don't want to really get deep into that. So how do you navigate in the prophetic? You know, well, how do you know that's a prophet? How do you know if they're in the, they're in the gift or are they in the office? How do you know? Like I said, there's two types of discernment. There's discernment and the natural, you can have natural discernment. That just means that you've been taught, you've been studying, you learn it, you know it, your hand's been on it, you know it. That's another discernment. The other discernment is spiritual discernment. You can only get that from the Lord. He has to inform you, this is what's really going on. And, and, and we have to covet, because we are, we're allowed to covet some things spiritual gifts and that is one and so anybody can get before you and say anything anything but how are you going to know did you just got a feeling oh you just like their personality i'm going to have to tell you get over this personality oh well, they seem like they're nice you got to start doing what god does and he gives you the ability to see the heart How many times have you read, but Yeshua knew the hearts of the men? Regardless of what they were saying, he knew what they were thinking. He knew what was in men. That's what the Bible tells us. He knew what was in the life of men. So when you inquire of the Lord, right? When you inquire of the Lord, and a lot of times we don't, we don't inquire, and, and see, when it comes to me, especially with um, um, prayer and um, doing deliverance, it doesn't matter. I, I mean, yeah, I can bring what I know. I can bring my experience. I have many years in doing deliverance. However, um, it doesn't matter at the end because, let me, excuse me, let me, let me not say that it does not matter. It does matter. Because your experience is what's going to help you. But the big thing is no matter what I know, no matter what I may deduce, no matter what my experience tells me, I still need to check and ask Holy Spirit, am I seeing what I'm seeing? Because this spirit right here looked like a, you know, whatever. But the Bible gives us a lot of um, hints. You shall know them by their fruit. And so... And we've made the mistake of calling things out by the fruit. No, honey. You need to, okay, fruit all the way down to the root. What's the root? That's what you want. Because you can pick fruit. I got a orange tree in my backyard. 
I can pick all the fruit off that tree and guess what's going to come up? More oranges. But if I pull that tree up by the root, there won't be no more oranges. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Am I helping you? Right? So, when you're navigating in the spirit, you know, with your prayer life, and I know that um, a lot of times we like to pray certain prayers, and uh, I think it was last week, perhaps it was the week before, and I was in um, Second Chronicles chapter 6, because we love chapter 7, verse 14, like that's the... That's all we know about Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people who are called by my name, yeah, okay, yeah, we know that one, but you don't know all of it. When I read Second Chronicles six, you could see that it went perfectly. It was a part of chapter seven. I mean, this is a real prayer. This is a prayer that is going to touch the hem of His glory. All of these little surface prayers that we do, Lord, I love you, Lord, I thank you. God, I thank you for waking me up another day. It's not chasing no demons out of your life. It's not going to stop you from overeating. It's not going to stop you from overspending. It's not going to stop you from fornicating. It's not going to stop you from lying. It's not going to stop this demon that is a lineage demon who's in your family just running rockshot all over the place doing whatever he wants, everybody in your family getting a divorce, nobody can keep a man, nobody, I mean, just everybody's, well, you getting abused, well, my mama, well, she was abused too, like, it doesn't break any curses, Lord, I love you, Lord, I thank you, those, that's, that's not what that's for, Apostle Shaul, or Paul, um, but his name is Shaul, when he prayed, and he gives you this outline in Ephesians 6, and he, and he talks about there's all kinds of prayers, petitions, supplications. There's decrees, declarations, all of it. And if you say that you understand kingdom, because we love throwing that word around, kingdom, kingdom. We love throwing that word around, but we have no idea what kingdom is. We don't know what it is. We know what church is. We got that down real good. And, you know, and, and please, I don't, I'm not, I definitely don't want anyone here to take it like I'm talking down to anybody because I remember I know nothing about the kingdom. I know all about church. And when I mentioned the church that I uh, first came to uh, years ago, I didn't know anything. And I mean, that, that, the Lord just, he was like, yeah, you go to that church right there, threw me in. And things that I thought were true, I found that were not true. But you don't know. Experience is your best teacher. There are six different Hebrew words for the word teach. One of them means to learn or to know by experience. There's another word for teach. It's shanan. Shanan. When you look in your Bible and you see teach, all you see is teach or instruct. But you don't know. In Hebrew, shanan means to sharpen. So I had to get sharpened. Then there's yara. That's yara. Then, the, I mean, there's lamed. There's different words for teach, and it means different things. And so at some point, we got to start asking Holy Spirit, what part of the mentorship is this? Like, what part of the mentorship class is this again? And because when you know where you are, you're on alert. You're paying attention because the adversary is roaming about, seeking whom he may devour. He comes after you because of what you don't know and what you think you know. That's how he was able to get Judas because he thought that Yeshua came to to just take over all of Rome. He thought that, but it wasn't time. He was wrong. And that's why Hasatan was able to literally go right into his heart. He just moved over and stepped right in. 
And Yeshua knew it. That's why he was like, yeah, go do what you got to do. He didn't jump up and was like, I'm the son of God. I know what you're trying to do, but it's all in the plan, bro. He didn't talk. He, he just let him go to do what he thought he was supposed to be doing because it was a part of the plan. And so when you're navigating in the prophetic, you have to see what, not just what the adversary is doing, because some people, all they see is demons. You got to see what the enemy is doing. But more than that, you got to see what God is doing. And then you have to see exactly what he wants you to do. Lord, what is my part? Where am I on the wall? What part of the wall am I supposed to be on in this season? What do I do? How do I do it? Who do I speak to? How do I pray? When do I pray? And we, we just got this complacency on us. And then we're listening to people that are listening to people that are listening to other people. And them jokers don't know what the heck they're talking about. And it's more like um, the blind leading the blind. Right? It's a blind leading the blind. And we, we and we got the Bible sitting right there. We got it on our phone. We, we got all these apps. I mean, I got like 12 different Bibles sitting over there. And, 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 and the devil don't care how many Bibles you got if you don't open it up and study to show yourself approved. To have diligent, it means diligent study. Just diligent study. Because when the adversary comes, and he will, and he has, then you can just calmly say, it is written. You ain't got to shout and all this carrying on that I see people do because the devil is not deaf. And he ain't scared of you. But if he looks in you and he sees the keys of authority and the keys of intimacy and he sees that you are standing flat-footed and you know the word, the Bible says, and Apostle James, this is uh, Yeshua's brother, he says, submit to God. This is a three-step program. So easy. Three-step program. Submit to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee. Boom, bam, pow. One, two, three. And living a repentant life. So people, people want the, like this real quick, easy fix. Um, it's your entire lifestyle style, to be living consecrated, to live a repentant life. Repentant life. Yeshua led a repentant life. How do we know? Because he always turned around, turned away from evil. Always. And this is not, this is, you don't even need Holy Spirit to do that. You see it? It's bad. I'm going to do something else. That's why he told Cain, or Cain, his name is, he said, send his crouching at the door. But you got this. You can master it. No Holy Ghost needed. You just need this. A heart for God and a mind willing to do the work and work the works of God. That's all you need. But we thank God because we really need Hurul Kodesh. We need Holy Spirit to give us some insights, to give us the mind of God so that we're not slipping and falling and, oh my God, we got another portal open and a stream of, of demons are coming through and, and now... I don't understand why I keep struggling financially or why every time I turn around and I try to get something going, it fake, it's falling and flipping out. And, and that's fruit. When you see stuff like that, that's fruit. You got you to gotta pinpoint it, drag it all the way back down to the root. Like I said, I got an orange tree in the back for all those that just jumped on. I can pick every orange off. But guess what? In its season, it's, dark, it's going to still produce more oranges. So I would have to pull that orange tree out from the root. There will be no more fruit. Are you hearing me? I love y'all. I love y'all. Listen, I'm going to tell you the truth. Because... 
even when you cast the demon out, and I've done that, you know why they come back? Because like you, you swept the house, you cleaned it, but you didn't fill it with something else. You didn't fill it with the word. You didn't change your mind all the way. There was still some kind of, like I said, um, I showed you guys on on the uh, PowerPoint, that it's that seducing spirit. Let me see, where is it at? Uh... <laughs> oh my God, where's my stuff at y'all? Hold on. <laughs> Nobody don't want me to teach this. Oh, that's what happened. Okay. Yeah, that's what happened, y'all. I'm sorry. That's what happened. All right. There it is. I hid it from myself. I'm sorry, guys. Y'all must have been like this chick right here. <laughs> right. So let me go. Let me go back. So we're talking about navigating in the prophetic, y'all. All right. So I want you to see something. So one, two, three, four, point four, seduce. Right here. Seductions, enticements, fascinations. This, All of this happens in the heart and in the mind. And then the seared conscious comes. And it's going to turn the heart and it's going to turn the soul. You see the word indifferent? Indifferent. And that's what happens. And it's like, it's like a sudden heat. It's like a sudden heat, y'all. So that's what happens when the forerunner gets there. Right? Right? That's what happens. So then you find yourself in the war room. That's where you find yourself. Like it or not, ready or not, you in there. And you got to get a strategy. So when I'm teaching like on spiritual warfare, these are the things that, that these are the steps that you got to understand. These are the steps you got to take. Uh, my, my, uh, I have a battalion. And I have five companies within the battalion. And so I teach strategy, very military terms, because guess what? Guess what? The devil got a playbook, but so does the Lord. All right? So you got to get your BDU, that's your battle dress uniform. Where do you find that? In Ephesians 6 and 12, the armor of God. You got to do drills. That means you got to get that word in you, right? You got to get that word in you. And so it is important. No, I'm not letting you see my whole playbook. Sorry. <laughs> February 6th, y'all, February 6th. And we're doing six weeks and, the, and it's on demand. So you could just watch, you know, the classes whenever, but it's for six weeks. So by the time we actually meet, we talk about the lessons that you were looking at. I just try to make it as easy as possible. So you get it. You, you get all of them at one time. And so um, our BDU, and I talked about this last year, about the BDU, battle dress uniform. Like you get dressed for battle. And it's like, well, I don't feel, well, I'm tired. I'm so tired. I keep being tired. You lose. You should never be too tired to save your own life. You should never be too tired to fight. You should be tired of, not so much of having to fight, but tired of letting the adversary just do the most with your life and your finances and your relationships. I'm, I'm tired of that. Because guess what? Guess what happens when you stop fighting? He wins, you lose. And guess what else happens? The other people that are tied to you, 
tem números. So when you think of lineage, it's not just you, pumpkin. It's not just you, beloved. It's not just you. So you got to think past you. And you got to get past offenses. And start building up your defenses. And, um, I mean, it's just work. And we got to do it. It's just work. And we have to. Simply because if, if, if we don't, it's an automatic fail. You ever, you've been in school and you had to take a test and you don't take it? That's an automatic fail. Were you in class? Yeah. Did you take the test? No. Automatic fail. So it's... it's, it's you have to be present and accounted for. So, you know, it. I, listen, out here in these prophetic streets, listen, I could tell you some stuff that I've seen. And it's not for the faint of heart. It's, it's really not. And, you know, again, going back to, and one of the things that we're going to talk about in this class is just knowing yourself. Because if you become a master of you, that takes away all of the plays that the adversary would have. But he's like, oh, no, she got that on lock, so I can't do that. But this, I can't do that no more because she done. You got to be a master of you. The reason why he, he wins so many uh, plays is because we don't know ourselves. We think we know things about ourselves that we don't know. We see through a glass darkly, but the day will come where we will know as we are known. Amen. All right, guys. So that's, I just wanted to pop in here. So um, just for a few minutes and um, just talk to you all a little bit, just for a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put this in here I should have had this done earlier so and for those of you that think that you want to do this and you're more than welcome I welcome you um, it's six weeks it is on demand because I think about people that are busy right I think about people that are busy that have lives that that don't have a whole lot of time so that's why I made it on demand um, Nabi, yeah, NabiTeaches.com forward slash bootcamp2021. Registration is going to be closed. Like, what's it, on Tuesday? Oh, yeah, it's, it's shutting down this week. This week, I extended it because I felt like I was supposed to because I was ready to shut it down uh, the other day. But um, for those of you that want to take the course, it's six weeks. Um, like I said, it's video. It's on demand. And if you um, if you're if you're taking it, we do meet once a week, and that's only to answer questions, for commentary, for me to expand the teaching. But the videos um, are not like these one-hour-long videos. Like I said, I condensed it. You get PDFs, and um, and I want you to ask me questions. Things that people have probably not told you, things you seem like the like the answer is so elusive, and people are like going around, and they just I mean, I mean so we we'll get into the think tank and um, just kind of pretty much um, um, navigate in these prophetic streets. So um, um, let me see, what's today? Today is Tuesday. I think that I'm going to close out the registration on Thursday. I think I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it to Thursday. So two more days and then I'm shutting it down. Um, class starts February 6th. That's on a Saturday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, if you don't make the live class, it's not a big deal simply because you will already have the lesson. You'll already have the lesson. So, um, And so you can watch them all at once. You can watch them one at a time. That's that's just completely up to you. 
And um, but when we meet for that week, we're talking about what's happening that week. All right. So yeah, and I think I have some bonus stuff for you guys as well. I love giving bonus things. So because I want to make sure that you're getting what you need to get. Amen. All right. I love you guys. And um, anybody have any questions about navigating in the spirit? Because um, you guys, a lot of you guys are being real quiet right now. Y'all just lurking and looking. Hey, Ramona. I love you. Girl, where you been? See, they don't love me like they used to. Where you been, Ramona? Um, what time? It's um, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that... That'll be 3 o'clock for me here on Maui. So anybody watching from Hawaii, um, it will be 3 o'clock. But it will be on Shabbat. It will be on Saturday. And it's at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central. And, you know, if you come in to, um, let me see, if you come in... Well, let me say this. All, like I said, all of the videos are going to be cataloged. So it comes to you. And if you have a question, a comment, you don't understand something, you can email me or wait until we get to class and we can talk about it then. But I, I, I find that it's more helpful if I give you the lesson beforehand. That way you have time to marinate on it. You know, write down your questions, write your comments. You know, if there's an experience or a backstory that you have that's relevant, that has to do with what the teach is for that week, you bring that to class. So you bring your questions, your comment, your feedback. And I, I answer questions also. I can um, uh, collapse more of the teaching for you for that for that week. And so, yep, nabiteachers.com forward slash bootcamp 2021 starts February 6th. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central. I said that already, and I'm saying it again. All right. So, and if you know somebody that's interested, just pass it on. Maybe you don't. Maybe you think you got it on lock. Okay. I'm not. I don't. I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one. Um, but I think that we can all learn from each other. I mean, I'll take somebody's class for um, prophetic stuff because guess what? I don't know everything, but I do know what I know. Um, I know I have a very unique background in spiritual warfare, um, having to literally fight with demons, um, seeing them, casting them out, um, uh, all kinds of manifestations. So I'm, I'm bringing all of that real experience. I don't want to just bring you textbook. Well, we saw it in the Bible. Well, I could show it to you in real life and how to chart it in your life and how to recognize it. Because all of the, the stuff that we're doing right now, and, and we think that if we, you know, wave a banner, I love my banners, wave a banner, and that's just going to make the demons run. That only happens when God instructs you to do it. Kind of like when he told Moshe to hit the rock the first time, the first, not the second time, the first time. Or when he told him to throw his staff down uh, or to lift his staff up and the, the sea parted. Those are prophetic instructions. So if God says do this and you do it, then it works. But not just because you feel like it. Okay. All right. The, the link is right there. Ramona. www.nabi, N-A-B-I teaches, but I'll, dot com forward slash boot camp 2021. But I will, I will, I will send it to you because I love you. Yeah, so so because we have to get out of this blabbing and grab it. Um, well, yeah, if I wave my banners, the devil gonna be running. No, the devil will probably pick up one of your other banners and hit you in the head with it. It only works when it is a direct instruction from the Lord. I, I, I listen. I have real, real warfare experience. And I will share. Um, uh, I will share my experiences with you, so that you guys have some context. It's not just a Bible verse. It's not just a chapter. It's not just a psalm. But real world experiences, because if you don't know how to contend 
like the Bible talks about, I believe it's in Hebrews, the letter to the Hebrews, the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for. Because all this other stuff we're doing, we're doing the most right now. And the church is getting laughed at. And it's not because they don't understand. It's because and because I because I, I know some things that we do is foolishness to the world. And that's just the way that's going to be. Um, however, there is stuff that's just foolishness to the Lord. And we think we're doing something. We, we think that we're doing something. And we're self-deceived. And my charge is to raise up an army that will serve God without compromise. That's my charge. So, you know, when I'm in class, I may say things and you're just like, what? But I can back it all up. I can back all of it up. And I don't want anyone to be lost, not on my watch. They will not be deceived, not on my watch. Because I don't have time to sugarcoat it. You're going you going, you going to drink it and you're going to drink the whole cup. <laughs> Love y'all. Listen, you're gonna drink you're gonna drink drink ye all of it. All of it. Alright guys, so for real, I'm gonna go. And um I think that's all that I have for now. Alright, so and for those of you that already signed up, I can't wait. I'm excited. I'm so excited. And for those of you that's just thinking about it. I, I believe that it's going to help catapult your ministry and not just your ministry, but your personal life. Because, you know, one of the things that I tell people is like, I, I don't, I'm really not impressed with somebody's office or their mantle or their anointing because I'm going after the soul. It's the soul of the person. Because the soul is what wants to take over and drive. And we can't have that. Because the heart above all else is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? So we don't want the soul driving. Don't drive me nowhere. No, I want I want the spirit. Because that's how God speaks to us. From spirit to spirit. Because our spirit, when it's when, when we come to God, is locked up. There's no issues in the spirit. It's the soul. It's your mind that have the challenges. All right, so, all right, so I'm going to go. I love y'all. Love y'all with the love of the Lord. And I will see you guys. Mwah. Shalom. That means have a good week. <laughs>